Today on City Line, it happens in Texas high school football. It gained traction in Canadian youth hockey. We examine why young student athletes are staying back to get ahead. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Holmes Ward and welcome to City Line. The threat over worrying about increasing interest rates on student loans is an ongoing concern for many families wishing to put their kids through college. Scholarships are often the best way to secure financial aid, so some are using basketball as a way to get to college and beyond, even if it means taking drastic measures to increase the chances of obtaining an athletic scholarship. Let's take a look. Larry Merritt runs the Bengals Amateur Athletic Union Youth Program in Boston. They teach the importance of education by using basketball as a way to connect with the youth. Our program doesn't just focus on basketball. We focus on character and leadership development. And we, we've got a big emphasis on academics. If kids are not doing well in school, they can't play basketball for us. There are a number of after-school sport programs available to youth who are serious about becoming college and professional athletes. Well, a lot of them hope that with the investment and the exposure that AAU and YBOA brings to the table, that if a little investment can get them a greater outcome, of a, of a four-year basketball scholarship. Most parents who place their children in organized sports programs do have realistic expectations that go beyond performance and achievements. The chances of playing college basketball or beyond college basketball is very slim. It's more about becoming a good person and having some life experience. They're with kids from all walk of life and they're going to go out into the world and meet people from all walks of life. And this sort of helps them start bridging the gaps from now. One of Larry Merritt's former athletes, Wayne Selden, was a top prospect recruited to Kansas University on a basketball scholarship. Selden stayed back a year while playing for the Bengals and then transferred to a college prep school to reclassify. Wayne Selden's a very unique kid. You know, we seen when he was in the third and fourth grade that he was going to be a star. When a basketball prospect stays back a year in middle school, they end up being a year older in high school, gaining both a physical and mental advantage over their classmates. This controversial practice allows a player to compete for an additional year and increase their chances of being seen by college recruiters. We don't encourage kids to stay back, but if there are kids who are in an academic setting where the curriculum is lower than the school that they're going to be trying to go to, you don't want your kid getting in a situation but academically is going to be more of a struggle for them. Coaches from Division I basketball programs, like Boston University men's basketball head coach Joe Jones, are always on the lookout for top talent during the scouting and recruiting process. I think for certain kids, especially academically, emotionally, as well as socially, it's great to have that extra year of high school. I don't know if I would do it strictly for basketball reasons, I'll be honest with you. Travis Robinson, one of the scholarship athletes on the Boston University basketball team, is a senior set to graduate in the spring. What's at stake is a free education. I mean, I think that's really important, but I think it should be done with all the right motives and all the right reasons. Like, it should be so you can get to college. Although staying back is an acceptable practice within high school basketball, not everyone agrees with the trend. Just stay back a year? Absolutely not. Absolutely, Absolutely not. not. Personally, I think it's kind of stupid because you're basically just doing the whole grade over again just to play basketball. I could work just as hard as academics and get an academic scholarship. There's over a million athletes out there. And everyone thinks their kid gonna be the next NBA player. For us, it's not about going to the NBA, it's about getting your NBA. For a kid that could use an extra year of high school, that could develop into a better student, I'm all for it. There's no rush, so to speak. Uh, but for a kid that's trying to become a Division I basketball player, I don't know if that's always the right decision. Winning college teams largely owe their success to their talented team roster, which means coaches might want to win by any means necessary. Honestly, the people that influence folks to stay back in school 
are usually the people that benefit. I find it not to be as helpful for the kid as for the coach that's benefiting from the extra year. Usually if, if a kid's special enough to get to that level, you're going to be seen. The, the kid will be seen and he'll get those opportunities, whether it comes now or a year later. The practice has been going on for decades and has its roots in both hockey and football. We want to get a nice array of experiences with, with different guys. So we'd like to see them in different settings. So we'd love to see the high school setting because you get a different feel from that. AAU is a little bit more loose and a little more wide open, you know, less structured. So you can see some things in, in that as well. you got to play in the right tournament that's going to give your kids the exposure where college programs are going to beat it. Ninth grade, high school, they start you know, offering you scholarships, giving you calls. When I figured out how, you know, how good I was and where my potential could take me, I started to really take it serious and focus on basketball. Travis is very familiar with the recruiting process after having taken that long journey and participated in the Philadelphia AAU leagues before landing a spot on the Terriers basketball team. I actually stayed back a year, but it was more for academic and it happened to just work out for me because I got it next year to play basketball. Parents with hoop dreams for their children can also play a role in the student athletes staying back. Some parents kind of play fantasy sports with their children and they kind of live vicariously through their children. They really press the sports issue. It's really nearsighted and I don't advise anyone to do that. Some of it is self-pride you know, that you have to get over it. I think parents need to be educated that it's about their kids. It's not about them. The parents' hoop dreams won't always succeed in the end. 70% of students will drop out of their sporting activity in high school for a number of reasons, including winning and the pressure to achieve, stress on performance and practice, the expenses associated with travel, participation, and equipment, and of course, sport-related injuries. A lot of kids are, are just happy playing. You know, they just want to play. They want the experience of playing. And I think a lot of us as parents have to allow our kids just to go out there and compete and have fun. They don't need to be the best. They just need to learn how to compete and learn the different things you can get out of playing a sport. And when we return, more stories about how staying back to get ahead can keep you down. Stay tuned. Welcome back. For young athletes trying to use basketball as a vehicle to get to college and beyond, the road to success is certainly not without its challenges and obstacles. As we mentioned before, stress, money, and especially injury can factor into an individual losing their opportunity at professional athletic stardom. Take a look. Most kids who pick up a basketball and fall in love with the game dream of playing alongside their idols in the ultimate talent showcase that is the NBA. Lamar Brathwaite is no exception. Lamar was part of the story Charlestown High School Townies basketball squad that captured several Massachusetts state championships and was chronicled by Boston Globe journalist Neil Swidey in his book, The Assist. I played basketball 24-7. I worked out all the time, and this was at a young age. Anthony Hardaway, that was um, my idol. He came from a, a, a rough neighborhood and a rough, a rough upbringing, and, and he made it out. So that was kind of my influential person that I really wanted to be like. Linda Easy Damwin's son Edwin was recently recruited to play basketball for Charlestown High School and hopes to continue the townies winning tradition by following in the footsteps of former Charlestown standout players like Lamar. The academics are very, very important for our family and we know that that really is the means to, to get anything. Basketball is always good. Um, but you need the academic piece to really have a solid foundation in life. But it wasn't until I actually spoke to the coach that I really got the program there was really about academics and how they have the academics really fuel the basketball. I thought it would be a good idea to stay back, get some extra exposure. I honestly thought I was a Division One player my whole entire time playing basketball, so that was stuck in my head. With that being said, it just it, it was my downfall because anything other than D1, I didn't want to hear it. After prep school, I went back home to Massasoit, which is a community college. So it kind of kind of crushed my dreams not being able to become a Division One prospect. But a closer examination of the fine print reveals that athletic scholarships are not a full ride deal. 
Instead, they are yearly renewable contracts that can leave student athletes out in the cold. One year, it puts a lot of pressure on the student athlete. Extending into four years will take away some pressure and will allow the student athlete to just perform in a more, you know, calm environment. So beyond basketball, what commitment do these academic institutions have to athletes who make a commitment to them? Most coaches look at it like it's a four-year deal. As long as you and I are on the same page of, of what your responsibilities are and you fulfill those responsibilities, I don't think your scholarship should be pulled. And I don't think it should be pulled just on the fact that you're not as good of a basketball player as I thought you were. So if your grades are sound, and then they also want to offer you a basketball scholarship, even if you get cut from the team and they take away your athletic scholarship, you have your academic scholarship to sustain your education while you're there in college. You know, these kids are making commitments. The school should make a commitment, make a four-year commitment. Looking at the actual numbers makes the dream appear even more daunting. There are 5,000 men who play sports at the Division I level of college athletics each year. Within the NBA alone, there are only 350 available roster spots already occupied by veteran players. So about 1% of NCAA men's basketball players will be drafted to the NBA. What then does the future hold for student athletes trying to make the leap from college basketball to the pros? Keith Lee and Antonio Anderson are both former college student athletes and currently teammates on the North Shore Tides, the new semi professional American Basketball Association franchise located in Lynn, Massachusetts. The ABA League is responsible for launching the professional basketball career of the legendary Dr. J, Julius Irving, who was also once a student athlete at the University of Massachusetts. It really hit me, I'd say, when I was about 13. I was watching Michael Jordan and just the things he was doing. I wanted to do the same to achieve the kind of success he did. And I wanted to as well. And obviously I wanted to make it a job because literally that's all I think about is basketball. And why not translate into that and something you love and to provide for your family. My goal was to be like every other basketball player, to play in the NBA, uh, play Division One, especially coming from a city like this where a lot of positive things really don't happen too well in, in athletics. I'm just happy that I was able to do that and be a positive role model for kids out here in Lynn. I got a chance to play for the Celtics for two days in 2001 and uh, that was something else. I was in, literally, it was for two days, Friday and Saturday in the Celtics camp. And the second day, I broke my ankle. But I did play this crazy sport called slam ball. That's with the trampolines, and it's, it's like a human live wire video game. I released a lot of my aggression playing slam ball. That's hockey, basketball, and football mixed into one. That's crazy. And now I'm, I'm pretty much making an approach to, to get a few 10-day contracts out of playing with the North Shore Tides. First ever semi-professional team in Lynn Mass. You know, I was a little knucklehead man in high school. Really didn't want to do no schoolwork. And I had to repeat my senior year. College was really fast. We played with guys, man, like Derrick Rose, Tyreek Evans, man. Those guys are fast and they push the ball. So it was it was it was a different pace. And then I, after my second year as a pro, I had to have five eye surgeries. That's why I left uh, Oklahoma City. Other than that, man, I've been blessed, man. Staying back a year can be considered by some to be a low-risk, high-reward way to score an athletic scholarship. With a tremendous upside, the only downside is that a player would only be a year older when they graduate from high school. I could become something great if I really focused on school, had a higher SAT score, and, and I could have really made something happen if I focused on that. The basketball that came with it. Everyone's not going to be a pro. Like Everyone's not going to make millions of dollars playing basketball. So I guess we use it more as a tool, you know, to get that good education so we could, you know, be successful in other parts of our life outside of basketball because the ball stop bouncing for everybody at some point. One thing is for sure, an athletic career has a limited lifespan. So getting an education is job number one. When we return, how big names can make big dreams a reality, a Celtic legend joins us in the studio. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. 
Welcome back. You know, we tell our children, stay in school, get good grades, and sometimes it goes in one ear and out the other. But what if one of your sporting heroes told you the same thing? You might just pay closer attention. Well, the Boston Celtics Stay in School program uses athletes to encourage good attendance, which plays an instrumental role in determining future scholastic success. Celtics legend, NBA champion, point guard, and University of Kansas graduate Joseph Jojo White joins us in the studio to speak more about the importance of education. Welcome, Jojo White. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Now, let's uh, start by talking about what the Boston Celtics are doing to encourage uh, good school attendance through their stay in school program and the importance of what you guys call pride. Well, what we try and do is make sure that we pass it on, uh, the importance of it, mm -hmm. you know, uh, as you go. Uh, you need all of, you know, the pride of, of, of watching those who've gone before you. Um, uh, good advice to pass on to the young players that are coming in and make sure we are good examples, you know, at the same time. And in this program, PRIDE stands for Perseverance, Respect, Integrity, Decisions, and Education. Yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. So everybody has to learn that when they come through the well, door. Well, to know the importance of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, Charles Barkley has said that uh, athletes should not be considered role models. He doesn't like to be considered a role model. On the other hand, the Boston Celtics and, and the program, the Stay in School program, uses athletes as role models to encourage good attendance. Do you, do you think that sports figures really are they, role models, whether they, they like it or not? They, they are because what they are doing and what they've achieved, you have those young men who uh, and women who stand in line to, to get an opportunity to, to move up the line or to better your skills so you can see how far you can go. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you, you have to go through, you know, certain levels, you know, of, of tutelage, uh, of learn, learning and understanding the game. And so that's passed on by those who've gone on. Mm -hmm. So you need examples, you know, that uh, can motivate you to want to reach out even further to, you know, to uh, make your skills a little better. Because it's not just about playing the game on the court, it's also about playing and surviving off the court too, absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. A lot of those things, you know, oh, oh, sure ties in, you know, with the everyday life you know, more than just basketball itself. Yeah, now Dallas Mavericks, uh, Vince Carter was criticized for attending his commencement the morning before mm. he played a semifinals game. And, and what do you think the message is being sent to young people about the importance of education? If this, if this move on uh, uh, Vince Carter's behalf was considered controversial, what do you, what do you think about that? I, I don't think he was thinking in terms of, of the reasons. As he was, uh, uh, he, he, he might have gotten that information from a family member, uh, how they've developed, you know, from the top to the bottom from, from him, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, suggested, you know, how important your education, you know, is now that you're in the position that you're in. Mm -hmm. So you, you were fine with it? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Now, according to an ESPN documentary uh, that was on, uh, it's called Broke. Mm. 60% of former NBA players have gone broke within five years of retirement. Um, talk more about the role that education plays uh, in this regard and efforts being made to also help promote financial awareness among the players. Because a lot of these young guys come in, fantastic contracts, but they don't know anything about managing money. Well, uh, who at that time and at that level coming in would know anything about that? Whether you're in the NBA Absolutely. or just any all, profession. All they can do is go on with what they see mm -hmm. um, or what they hear. Uh, we don't stop it and steal a lot of those things in these young players. We Once something happens or a, a player goes down uh, with an injury or sick or whatever, another one steps in. Mm -hmm. You see, so um, there, there are... Uh, uh, 
understanding the importance of how you continue to develop yourself on and off the floor mm -hmm. has a lot to do with how successful you are as you go. And of course, as you say, sometimes if you get injured, uh, another player replaces you immediately. And if Absolutely. you haven't prepared yourself for that possibility, Absolutely. then what do you do? You can't reach. You have to go back. You see what I'm saying? Prepare, preparation precedes your blessings. Mm -hmm. It's just like you have to develop continuously to, to get better as you go. Mm -hmm. Because each and every year, another load of young, young athletes fresh blood. coming in. <laughs> You see, so, so learning all the nuances, you know, of the game, you know, to understand how important that is. Now, what kind of preparation did you uh, put yourself through uh, when you started in the NBA? I mean, you had a long career with the Celtics, but what were you doing all, along the way to prepare for the next step? Well, I was in the Marine Corps. You know, I went through that before I came to training, you know, with the Boston Celtics. So... By the time I got to the Celtics, they could run all day. It didn't matter. Mm -hmm. I didn't get tired, mm -hmm. you know, and I carried the ball. Mm -hmm. So and I, I remember back when, when Red Arbach, when he was alive, uh, I remember him saying to me in front of all my teammates, JoJo, we want you to push the ball up as fast as you can push it up. Mm -hmm. And if you get down to the other end, you're down there by yourself, shoot it. <laughs> and so I was trying to figure out what was he doing. Uh -huh. He was trying to up, like with Rondo. Mm -hmm. Rondo sets the, the, the tone, you know, because he, he can run faster with the ball carrying it than you can without it. <laughs> you see, so to be able to, to up the tempo, you know, he looks to him like he looked to me. Mm -hmm. And so to have those skills, you know, I was only happy to try and pass them on to Rondo. Mm -hmm. And what, what do you tell Rondo about uh, playing ball? Give us some well, of the all, inside advice that you share with him. All of those things are little things that sometimes you just take for granted. You know, well, you have to work on those things. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you are the guy who's, who's carrying the ball. So you have to make sure that you set the stage, the tone. You see, that's what, you, what you're out there for. And you had, obviously, everybody knows, a great career on the court with the Celtics and an equally important career with the Celtics in the front office. A lot of uh, professional sport players don't have a chance to make that transition to uh, a great, comfortable retirement. Yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, uh, passing on down to being a, um, I can't come up with the word, um, an example, mm -hmm. you know, that a coach can say, you know. Be like JoJo White. Be like, be like JoJo. Mm -hmm. I mean, watch how he runs the floor. Mm -hmm. You know, watch how he gets everybody involved. Mm -hmm. You see. Uh, Look how he conducts himself off court. For sure. He's, all of those things are very, very, very important. Mm -hmm. Ongoing, during, you know, the whole time. Mm -hmm. You see, so to... I, I'm very, very conscious of passing on what was passed on to me, on to those who are coming on. Mm -hmm. Because they're going to be the ones who we will be shouting about, you know, just like with Rondo, we talk about him. You know, he's got a lot of things in front of me, and he's learned, he's learning how to utilize all what he does have. Mm -hmm. One quick word of advice you would give to young people in our audience today who are thinking about a career in professional sports, what would you say to them? Um, know too how important your education is you see so you 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 get a chance because you're you're fantastic as an athlete you get a chance a shot at a free education so mm -hmm. understand and know how important that is as well all right all right so stay in school absolutely the great jojo white thank you sir for joining us today and i see your ring you have your celtics ring on oh, can i try it on absolutely you sure may okay everybody i'm gonna put this on while i say <laughs> goodbye you can learn more about the stay in school program as well as all the organizations that we featured on today's show by logging on to our page at wcbb.com thanks so much for watching everybody have a great rest of your day